Hey Casey, Joe Hildreth here. Hey, uh, it was, uh, you know, I was expecting an email from you. I wasn't really expecting a um, a, a video, uh, so that was kind of neat. So I thought maybe I'd make one back here and uh, give you some of my thoughts about the Dave Gingery's um, uh, gas fire crucible furnace. Now. Um, I'll post a link again uh, to the uh, below this video for anybody that's interested. I built the uh, Gingery Gas Fire Crucible Furnace. Oh, I don't know. I think the dates might be on the photos on the website, but I, I want to say it was around 2006, 2007, 2008, somewhere near our camera. So it's been probably at least 10 years ago or so. And uh, so anyway, to answer uh, some of your questions, Casey, about my experience with the um, with the furnace, the burner, and the blower assemblies, and uh, and maybe tell you uh, my, the little story about its uh, uh, early demise. So, uh, first of all, it's it's actually a very good design, and, and it works well, and it can generate enormous amounts of heat. Okay, so. Um, I, the very first time I uh, burned it up, my last, uh, uh, I, I used that image as a, a thumbnail for one of my last uh, videos and and uh, if you look on the web website, you'll see that it burned so hot, it just it melted the burner tube off. Okay, now I didn't have a lot of fire escaping, but it was just uh, um, that much heat. So uh, let's start with the, the blower assembly. Okay, there's uh, the first thing I want to say about the blower assembly, it's uh, it's very, very, very important to make sure that when you build that blower that the fins are all the same size. And uh, 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 wh whether that means you clamp them all together, scribe a line and file them down to a line, whatever it takes, uh, mill them down or whatever because um, if they are slightly out of balance, uh, it will, you'll hear it, it'll uh, it, uh, it, uh, vibrate and, and make a bunch of noise. Um, in my case, I had a real hard time controlling the volume of air, right? Now this, this fan, uh, guys, will put out enormous amounts of air, right? And, uh, but I had a hard time controlling the uh, volume of air with the damper door because it had air leaks, right? So I ended up having to uh, kind of dis disassemble my shroud, run a bead of caulk around there and, and, uh, and put it back together before I could really control the, the airflow. Now I burned mine, uh, I burned with mine, I burnt uh, propane. Like I said, it got really, really hot. Um, and uh, you know, I was, I was pleased with it. the the uh, the way the burner's designed. It's got a it's got a restriction about a um, uh, just behind the uh, gas inlet uh, where the air comes through, and it creates it creates a pressure drop there, or you know, what's a venturi pulls it down, pulls the gas out, and and then you know the gas is mixed in with the air on, on out through the burn tube. The uh, other thing that I want to mention about uh, the Gingri furnace is that it's a lift type. Okay, so the body, there's a uh, um, uh, there's a pedal at the bottom of it that when you press, you can slide the lid uh, over to the side, uh, so you can get to the top of the crucible, so that you can uh, degas, uh, skim, add more uh, stock to your melt, or whatever you need to do, uh, and it works really, really well. And then, uh, but now the problem, the, the problem I perceived with it, I built mine exactly to Dave's specifications. And um, when you would uh, lift the body, it would, it would lift the body off uh, up above the crucible and lock into position so that you can get the crucible from the side. This way you're not picking it up. Uh, you know, from the top, setting it down on a pouring shank, and then and then pouring the crucible, you can actually you know get the crucible from the side uh, of the uh, uh, furnace and and pull it out, which I think is a little bit more safer, and I think that's what uh, David intended uh, intended there when uh, he designed it. But um, I never felt comfortable with the balance of it. In other words, uh, on the footprint that it had when you lifted it. Felt like it wanted to lift back. Now maybe, you know, if you had a, you know, a charge full of brass there, or you know, I don't think that <clears throat> with a number six crucible, six pounds of aluminum in there in that crucible, I, that's just not enough to make me comfortable. So my suggestion is, if you, if anybody builds this furnace, um, give it a wider footprint on the bottom, either mounted on a cart, that's probably the best thing to do. And Casey, I noticed that uh, you put your blower on a cart with some wheels, and by the way, that was an ingenious idea on making them wheels, man, I wanna remember that. Uh, I could see where that's, that, that would come in handy. 
Um, but uh, I think that uh, I would just mount the blower and um, the furnace assembly down on the same cart. Uh, I would try to keep a fairly low profile um, you know wheels if I could you know not small wheels but but maybe bring the axle up so that you you don't have a lot of so that you can lower the center of gravity right uh, you know I just think that's an extra kind of a safe thing that you can do uh, so other than that that's really um, all I got to say about it. now I didn't uh, use a castable refractory I actually used if I remember right I think I used a mixture of uh, of uh, uh, fire clay, perlite, and sand, and uh, mixed it up and rammed it in, and then vitrified the lining with the furnace, which is great and work will work just fine for um, aluminum melts, right? Provided that you can keep the heat down. But this is a this is a heat producing monster. You know, it's a that burner um, is just a monster. That's that's all I can say about it. But um, but uh, you know now my son my oldest son uh, Jason helped me build that and he was pretty proud of it so every time that uh, you know his friends would come over uh, he would uh, uncover the furnace and say hey look this is what we made and he would talk about it and he was amped about it and excited and, you know that's a that's a great thing for a kid you know get them excited about th and making things right um, get them away from the video games and and cell phones and all that crap um, but now uh, I'm not saying Jason. I'm not saying my son done this, but somebody left the uh, cover off of it. And you know, we have a long rainy season in Tennessee, uh, usually from spring until the first part of summer. It just rains all the time. Well, by the time I discovered it, the the furnace was ruined. I mean, it was absolutely ruined, and I was heartbroken, man. I was sick, right? And uh, so I uh, I kind of jammed it into a corner of my basement. Um, of my building, you know, because at that time I didn't have my building completed, and uh, and it's just it's still sitting there. And I just uh, someday I would like to uh, maybe uh, reline it, and if if there's enough there to reline, and 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 or you know it's worth building another one. And I might I might do that sometime. Um, but now, you know, as I'm finding, uh, you know, recently, you know, I've I've used. Uh, charcoal and, and propane right and those are both great things to, to melt aluminum with and maybe some brass um, but you know nothing you know you can't get any hotter so um, my you know I've got access to a lot of used vegetable oil so I've kind of been leaning toward the um, toward the uh, waste oil type burner and that's that's kind of what I'm working with now and and, and hopefully um, you know my, in my next uh, molding casting foundry kind of related video you know hopefully I can get that thing in a furnace uh, maybe get a mix of diesel uh, vegetable oil on it and burn it and see you know see if I can tweak it and then maybe uh, get it hot enough to where I can switch it over to oil and just see what happens so you know uh, I understand that there's a little bit of um, of um, adjusting to it that's got to be done so Casey thanks a lot man thank you for the questions they are great questions uh, the power hacksaw thanks for answering my questions because you know I've got two power hacksaw plans I got of course I got David's or Vincent's rather I think it's a son and then I got one from uh, Myford boy and both of them look pretty good um, but I just kind of like uh, um, I like the gingery style of projects I, I think that they're a cool thing to do and and um, so I might do that so uh, if you build one and tent uh, make sure you do videos I'd like to see it and uh, I'll have to try to source some materials I got some other things that I have to have to make before I can get to that uh, but I tell you what up to this point I've been using a hacksaw to cut metal and um, I'm lazy man I, I don't like that I gotta find uh, either draft uh, you know a kid that, I think that's what uh, uh, Mr. Mortimer would suggest, draft some kid and cut it for me, but then no, my luck, they'd cut it too short. So any, anyway, uh, Casey, thanks again, buddy, for, um, for the video um, question or an, an answer. It's an interesting way uh, to communicate. I never thought about that. So uh, maybe we can do some more of this uh, with some of the uh, other creators out there. You know, uh, when we communicate, some of us communicate via email or stuff. Uh, some of the stuff might be interesting enough to, uh, uh, to, to do a video on. I don't know. You guys comment down below and you tell me. So other than that, guys, uh, Casey, uh, thank you, sir. And uh, other, other than that, guys, have a blessed day.